thank you all for, for being here. Let me just point out, uh, I know a lot of introductions have been made, but uh, Dennis Davin, who is uh, my secretary of the Department of Community and Economic Development. Dennis, you want to just stand up? And <laughs> we're looking for great things here. I um, also want to point out that, that I do have a big, a, a long background in the private sector. Uh, I actually, this is my first um, foray into public office, and uh, I uh, really built a business uh, for most of my adult life. Uh, and then in 2006, sold the business, and in uh, uh, 2009, came back to the business, and uh, it was on the verge of bankruptcy, building products. We actually had some facilities here in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, we still do. And, and um, I say we, I actually retired in 2013. But we, th this has been a great place to, to do business. Came back in, in 2009, turned the business around, uh, and succeeded so that, that I can, could, could actually uh, uh, do this, run for, for governor, and, and I succeeded. But I think it's important to know that I, I am a lifelong, unapologetic Democrat, but I've spent my life in the business community, actually building a business. Um, I think I mentioned at one point I was the only PhD forklift operator in York County at the time I came back to, uh, to York County, uh, but I did spend my time building a business. I spent much of my adult life focused on uh, trying to revitalize the city of York, so I really have a great appreciation for what's going on here in the Lehigh Valley. You're not only producing economic development, but you're doing it in a way that, that is revitalizing this community. And that's, that's really important, not just for the Lehigh Valley, but it's really important for Pennsylvania. We need to find a way to do that across the state. And because we can't afford to have places like York or Bethlehem or Allentown or Easton or any city in Pennsylvania uh, lag behind in, in the, uh, the race to, to, to be as great as they can be. So uh, I think what you're doing here is, is remarkable and amazing, and this makes this a perfect place for me to try to blend those two things, how we can revitalize communities, uh, make better lives in Pennsylvania, and do that all through revitalizing our economy. Our best days have to be uh, ahead of us, and they have to be ahead of us because we are going to be a magnet for economic growth, for entrepreneurs who want to come here and create good jobs. That's what I want uh, for Pennsylvania, and I want to do that fairly, uh, but I want to do it really effectively. So that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm given my budget address uh, a week from Tuesday, uh, on the 3rd of March, next Tuesday, uh, and I plan to bring out a lot of different ideas as to, to what I think we ought to do in this first year in my office of, of office to make Pennsylvania better. But I want to give you some advance notice of what I want to do in, in the economic development area because I think it's really important. And I think I'm going to do some things that are very, very different for the first time in a long time. And, and I hope that you appreciate and, and approve of what, what I'm going to propose. Um, so my background in business, I think, informs me uh, in terms of, of what we ought to do to make Pennsylvania the kind of place that is attractive for people who want to build businesses here. Uh, and I think I know whereof I speak because I've actually done that. And I know that Pennsylvania has a jobs deficit. Uh, we have a lot of things that, that we have to work on. Uh, and I talked in my inaugural address you know, about creating a commonwealth where we have schools that teach, jobs that pay. Uh, and government that works. Uh, but I want to talk today about the, the, actually it was the first thing, the jobs that pay. We do have a jobs deficit here, and we need to do something about that. Too many Pennsylvanians, too many of our fellow citizens are struggling to make ends meet, and too many of our best and brightest are leaving Pennsylvania for other places. I said in my, address, my inaugural address that I'm, I don't want to be a part of the first generation of Pennsylvanians, really, to tell their kids they have to go somewhere else to succeed. I have two daughters, both very bright young women, 33 and 31. One's an architect, one is a geologist. Neither of them lives in Pennsylvania. We need to change that. Personally, I want to change that. But I think we need to change that as a commonwealth. Um, and, and we have work to do. Last year, the state saw some modest job growth, but it was under 1% uh, at a time when our economy was coming back, actually 7 tenths of 1%. Uh, and we're at the bottom of, uh, of the country in terms of uh, the, the states with job growth. And I understand states uh, have to go in the band uh, of uh, the ups and downs of the macro economy and the global economy, but we can do things to make sure that we're at the top of that band wherever we are in the cycle. 
Uh, right now, we're at the bottom of that band, and we shouldn't be, especially in job growth. Uh, we have to make new investments in 21st century manufacturing and refocus our economic development dollars and our strategies. I know manufacturing is something that people talk about and sort of pine for the past to say that's not going to come back. I've actually rebuilt my business on the basis of American manufacturing, and not just high-tech, advanced manufacturing, staying ahead of the curve. For crying out loud, I make kitchen cabinets. Uh, my company sells decking and railing, not high-tech stuff, and we compete with uh, overseas manufacturers very well with American workers. We can do that. We can do that in this country, and we can do that manufacturing in Pennsylvania. For too long, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania hasn't been a place where businesses feel they can come and grow. They, can't, they, they don't feel that they can come here and invest. Uh, country leading high corporate tax rates have never have not been helpful. I mean, uh, I know we, we have a lot of ways you can avoid paying that 9.99 percent rate, uh, but there's a sticker shock, and too many people look at that and say, you know, I'm not coming to Pennsylvania. Your tax rates are too high. So the Commonwealth isn't going to create jobs. The Commonwealth isn't going to actually provide the jobs, but the Commonwealth can set the table for robust economic growth, and that's what I want to do. Uh, we need to, to strengthen the middle class, we need to strengthen communities like this, uh, and the Commonwealth can play a role, a constructive role in, in helping the private sector do these things. In order to create jobs that pay and an economy that actually works, we must acknowledge that success will require investment in our companies and our people. We have to recognize the importance of the private sector. And today I'm announcing that my budget will contain significant reforms aimed at, aimed at three goals for economic development that will create good, paying jobs, middle-class jobs, family-sustaining jobs, and building a pro-growth business climate for Pennsylvania. That's right, I'm a Democrat, <clears throat> and I'm saying this. I want to grow Pennsylvania's manufacturing sector, and I want to create workforce partnerships that, that actually make sure that we have skills that the business community needs to actually develop. So anyway, what are we going to do? Let me start with how we believe we can create a, non or a very competitive climate to, to, to attract and retain jobs in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's economic prosperity has long been hobbled by an outdated tax structure that fails to incentivize job growth. Am I saying anything that's new to anybody here? No, I don't think so. My sweeping tax relief package achieves economic growth and improves, improves the fairness of the Commonwealth's tax structure in a number of ways. First. I'm going to reduce the corp I'm going to propose. I'm, this is a democracy. I'm going to propose reducing the corporate net income tax rate within two years, flipping Pennsylvania from one of the highest, I think maybe the highest, corporate net income tax uh, charger in the country to uh, one of the lowest. I want to go from our incredibly obscene 9.99 percent, that's right, 9.99 percent is the corporate net income tax rate to 4.99 percent within two years. Now, no one has done that before. We've talked about that. Different administrations have talked about that, but I want to do that. I want to go to 5.99 percent in the very first year. The second year, actually in my first budget, the, the first year, first full year, January of 2017, take that to 5.49, and in January of 2018, take that to 4.99 percent. That is a 50 percent. <clears throat> That's right, I said 50 percent reduction in the nominal corporate net income tax rate in Pennsylvania. That's the first thing I want to do. Now, that would make us, again, one of the lowest, the states that charge a corporate net income tax. There are currently only six states in the country without a corporate net income tax, but three of those states, including Texas, actually charge a business tax called the gross receipts tax. So really, there are only three states in the whole country without a corporate, net, uh, corporate tax uh, at all. Uh, we would be one of the lowest in the country. That's something that, that I've been uh, wor working on, and, and hell, I'm expect expecting a standing ovation there. Anyway, okay. <laughs> nah, it's all right, forget it. The second, second thing we have to do, we have been talking since the Ridge administration about eliminating, again, I paid this tax, and so I know that it's wrong, uh, the capital stock and franchise tax, right? And we've been talking about phasing that out since the Ridge administration. And every so often we go into a recession, someone says, well, let's just sort of delay phasing that out, right? Okay, enough reduction, enough stopping the, the phase out. It's scheduled to be phased out January 1st, 2016, in less than a year. I want to do that on schedule. 
How's that? All right. <clears throat> now, one of the things that, that I was on the Business Tax Reform Commission in the early part of the, the aughts, uh, and one of the things that, that we talked about was in terms of reducing the, the obscenely high rates, we wanted to make sure that we broaden the base. Uh, and we need to go to combined reporting to do that, and so I'm, I'm going to propose that as well. Overall, this is a big drop in corporate net income tax. It's a, it's a drop in corporate taxes, uh, even with the combined reporting, which was one of the big loopholes that was used to circumvent the, 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 the tax. All those things together, this should be a, a signal that we are open for business in Pennsylvania. Hope you like that. Second, building Pennsylvania's, thank you. Building Pennsylvania's manufacturing sector. Again, this is something that seems like a pipe dream. Politicians talk about this, and they really don't know what they're talking about. I actually have built a manufacturing business, and we're headquartered in York, Pennsylvania, and I've done it by basically taking a distribution mentality and turning it on its head and saying, you know, we, we will design the supply chain in a way that makes, makes, takes full advantage of our nearness to the market. We are close, to, we are right in the middle of the richest market in the world right here. And I've taken that, shrunk my supply chain so that we're not bringing product from East Asia or Europe or any place else in the world. We're bringing it from the United States. And that advantage, even with the higher wages and, and the more scrupulous regard for regulations and the lack of currency manipulation, allowed me to actually compete head to head with those other countries in the world. We can make things here in this country and we need to get back to the point where we understand that we can make and we should make things here in the United States because they provide good jobs and they provide great opportunities for our citizens and for our communities. So we need to, to do that. The government, I think, working at the margins can, can help manufacturing come back. Uh, we need to, first of all, I, I need to sell that idea. And I understand that as governor, I can do that, that we can do things, the conventional wisdom is wrong, that stuff has to go overseas. We need to do it right here. And other companies are, are recognizing that as well. But I'm, I think I'm in a good position to, to actually preach that gospel. In addition to that, thank you. <clears throat> in addition to that, throughout my campaign, I talked about doing some specific things. And I don't believe in economic development by the deal. That, that has been, in some cases, that's the only thing, the only arrow in our quiver. And, and we need to make deals, and, and I will continue to want to do that. But that's at the margins. We need to create the environment that is conducive to private sector growth where entrepreneurs actually come and, and do the hard, heavy lifting uh, to create the jobs. But at the margins, we can do some things to, to make their jobs uh, easier. And one of those things I proposed throughout the campaign was a manufacturing jobs initiative. For those companies that actually come to Pennsylvania and create new jobs, like say a million dollars worth of new jobs, I want to give them a reward. Uh, and, and so I have, I'm proposing $5 million in my budget to make sure we have money for a, to fund a tax credit that will give companies that actually create good family sustaining jobs with benefits, good manufacturing jobs here in Pennsylvania and do that over time. I want to have a, I want to have a clawback so there's some accountability here because some of our programs in the past have not had that accountability. But if we do it right, if we attract the right companies, I want them to get an extra reward, not just better tax situation, a better tax environment. Uh, and so $5 million is, is there to fund uh, a tax credit for that. Uh, next, I'm going to provide $5 million for a new initiative that works on the uh, industrial resource centers, the IRCs. Uh, you're familiar with those? They actually were created in the Casey administration as sort of a, uh, a way of, of bringing businesses together and make sure that, that, that skills, that new ideas are, are being uh, distributed throughout the economy. Uh, I want to make those, those organizations uh, work better uh, and give them more resources. So I'm proposing $5 million for the IRCs. Um, in conjunction, well, thank you. In conjunction with private sector growth, uh, you know, matching funds, this could actually leverage private sector investment by three to one. So that $5 million could be worth a lot more than that if these industrial resource centers do what we want them to do uh, to actually generate uh, uh, new, new ideas uh, and new funds from the private sector. Finally, I want to talk about creating workforce partnerships for economic success. You know, one of the things we have in Pennsylvania is, is great institutions of higher education. I mean, obviously, you have some great ones right here in the Lehigh Valley, but we, Pennsylvania, but did I, what was, yeah, okay, right. 
I knew that would get at least some, some response. But Pennsylvania, I think, if you take the number of seats in higher education, Pennsylvania ranks second or third in the country in terms of, of the, the number of seats. And we certainly have some great institutions. Well, we ought to take advantage of that. Uh, and too often, the people who come here and impart uh, their, their wisdom or learn new skills in Pennsylvania at those institutions of higher education go elsewhere uh, to, to use them. So, you know, I haven't gotten a thank you note from places in Texas or Washington State or California. Have you? Thanking us for all, you know, the skills we've, we've given the, the people who actually create great jobs in, in their states. But that's essentially what we've done. We've imported raw talent, we've exported skills, uh, and sent people off to use the things they learned here in Pennsylvania somewhere else. I want to change that. I'd like to keep people here. I'd like to have them come here, learn good things, and then apply those new skills and talents that they learned here in Pennsylvania to create good jobs, a strong economy, and I think we can, we can do that. I did that, <clears throat> I don't want to step on anybody's toes, I was, pres I was chairman of the board of York College of Pennsylvania, and uh, when I was there, one of the things I, I was proudest of was how your college uh, brought different businesses together. We created a mechanical engineering program, and it was to create mechanical engineers and, and a program that would, would actually create good graduates. But another goal was to actually bring people who were technicians in manufacturing plants in, Penn in York County, mainly, to come together and talk to each other. And it became a continuing seminar and continual improvement uh, for manufacturers in York County. Uh, the college was essentially a convener. Since then, the college has done things to, to actually help monetize good ideas uh, uh, that come in out of the laboratories uh, into the private sector. We've done things in uh, life sciences with, with food technology. We can do things like that, taking the raw material we have, the human capital in our universities, and I want to do that. Uh, I want to have training programs that, that make sure that, that uh, we are uh, creating relevant skills at the primary and secondary level, but I also want to take these, these ideas uh, that are coming out of our universities and institutions of higher education uh, to uh, make sure that our economy and our businesses uh, are making full use of the, the great skills we have here in Pennsylvania. So my budget uh, includes an $18 million for programs that will help Pennsylvanians gain, tar gain targeted job training and new skills necessary to compete in our changing economy. Uh, but I also uh, want to uh, have a significant boost in funding of two of Pennsylvania's most successful the existing in-demand public post-secondary programs that work to meet the needs of regional and statewide employers. We have WedNet, I want to increase funding for that. We have the Industry Partnership Program, I want to increase uh, investment in that. But I also want to invest, in, well, thank you. I also want to invest in job-linked literacy programs. Too, much, too often literacy is a problem when it comes to, to just em employment. Uh, it's a problem with CDL truck drivers, it's a problem with people who want to take entry-level positions. Uh, I need to, to, we need to together work on, on making sure that, that employees have the basic skills they're going to need. We also need to make sure that, that our, again, K through 12 pro programs are relevant to the needs of, of, our, of our industry. We do need college graduates. We need people who want to go to college, but we also need people who want to go and, and be plumbers uh, and technicians and, and electricians. We need that, and, and I think we need a, a, an education system that recognizes that we need all of those skills. So <clears throat> my budget will propose, <clears throat> Thank you. We'll propose that we, we actually do a better job of trying to make uh, our, our schools, our education system in general more relevant to the needs of our economy. So in Pennsylvania, uh, what I'm saying is here, we need to do things differently and look beyond labels. Uh, we've got to say, we've got to ask ourselves, is what we're doing, does it make sense? And I think when I look at what we've been doing, uh, when I look at what we've been doing from the perspective that many of you have from the private sector, when I look at what we've been doing in the public sector, it hasn't made sense. And so we do have major challenges ahead, I understand that. Pennsylvania has to do a lot of things that we haven't done, but we do have resources here to do some great things. Um, it's time for pragmatism. I think we've had enough ideology out there. Uh, I'm not an ideologue, uh, and I think we need that. In, in, in pr we ha certainly have in the private sector. When I was running a business, I didn't ask whether a solution I was trying to promote was a Republican or a Democratic idea, the question was, would it work? And I think we have to do that uh, here in, in government, and that's what I want to do. Uh, I reinvented, I had, 
I think good experience reinventing my company. I'm very proud of what I did to bring my company back in the worst building products recession in the history of the world. Uh, and I know we can do the same thing here. We can turn Pennsylvania around. This is not a business, or it has not been, in my estimation, a real business-friendly state. Although I, I got to say that, you know, we do sort of badmouth ourselves a little bit too much. I did build a business twice here in Pennsylvania, located, head, headquartered in York, uh, and have done quite well uh, working out of Pennsylvania. So we have improvements we can make, but let's not lose sight of the fact that this is a pretty good place to, to do business re even, uh, even right now. Anyway, I re reinvented my company in the depths of the recession. I know we can do that here in Pennsylvania. We do have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do, but I don't plan to pursue the betterment of our economy, of our schools, of our communities, and our government in a vacuum. And I don't intend to do it at a snail's pace. We know what we have to do. Let's just get to it. Let's start working and, and get this over and done with. And let's make Pennsylvania everything that we know it can be, the great place, the great commonwealth, great place that, that, that we, we can build businesses, attract people to Pennsylvania, get my daughters back. That's what I want to do. And I really appreciate your giving me a, a, a listening to, to what I want to do in my budget address. So thank you very much for having me here.